Welcome to the Dr. Saul and Dorothy Kitt Film Noir Festival. I'm the programmer of the festival, Rob King. Ordinarily, of course, we'd be welcoming you to the Lentfest Center for the Arts in Harlem to watch films together in person. But sadly, the theater lies empty at the moment with strict social distancing rules in place. Uh, so we're having to bring the films to you in another way. Uh, this year by offering a mini iteration of the festival online. The topic, the theme is border incidents, the US-Mexico border in film noir. That border has of course long been a third rail in American politics, particularly over the last several years, but it's also been a recurrent setting in crime fiction. The border is a place where goods entering the US can be reclassified as contraband, where the citizens of neighboring states uh, can become undocumented. But the border is also a zone through which domestic crime seeks its own escape, evading the arm of the US law to find safe haven. The border has in this way functioned in American popular culture as a kind of shadow zone of the law, a place where categories of legality and illegality get constructed and reconstructed, a place one might imagine ripe for noir. Now, film scholars have often associated film noir with themes of existential alienation. But the film historian Jonathan Auerbach, in his book Dark Borders, has argued that such themes really need to be grounded in specific and post-war fears about the inability to decide who was truly American and who was un-American, as the House Un-American Activities Committee suggests. This online version of the Kit Noir Film Festival argues that the southern border soon became another site for these questions, especially following the passage of the Emergency Farm Labor Program in 1942, which permitted millions of Mexican guest workers into the country to cope with wartime labor shortages, particularly during harvest season. The southern border has come to function in our contemporary imaginary as a site for the exercise of the law often for its cruel and punitive exercise. In post-war American noir, however, the border is an object of both law and desire. The border is a site to be policed, for instance, in border incident in which federal agents work to bust a human smuggling ring uh, presided over by an unscrupulous American farm boss. But the border is also the longed for way out for those for whom American life has itself become a trap, an escape hatch from an unwarranted murder charge in where, where danger lives, for instance. In Orson Welles's Touch of Evil, meanwhile, desire and the law are brought into a kind of collusion in the figure of Vargas, played in Unfortunate Brownface uh, by Charlton Heston. Vargas, who under his Mexican name, Miguel, is an object of interracial desire, and under his Americanized name, Mike, is the agent of a law that roots out racist corruption. This year's abridged online festival presents these three films, Border Incident, Where Danger Lives, and Touch of Evil, for free for online streaming over a two-week period in March, culminating in a roundtable discussion on March 18th, featuring the film scholar Jonathan Auerbach, the aforementioned author of Dark Borders, together with the post-colonial theorist Homi Baba, the editor of Artes de Mexico, uh, Margarita de Oriana, and Jonathan Ryan, the executive director of RAICES, the uh, Refugee and Immigrant Center for Education and Legal Services. At this time of unrest in America, it's our hope that these films and the conversations that they inspire can help us probe the boundaries and the borders through which nations are made and remade. I hope you enjoy the films, and I hope to see you again in the Lenfest Center for the Arts. Thank you.